this is what they looked like not even seven weeks ago. It is insane how fast they grow. From this to this in seven weeks. It's insane. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Modern Homesteading with Tessa. I'm Tessa and this is the channel where I show you how to feed yourself. Today, we're talking about processing meat chickens. This is the first batch of the year, and so I'm gonna run a test batch um, of just like 15 chickens tomorrow just to make sure all my equipment's working well, make sure everything's just dialed in. I'm gonna separate them out tonight and um, put them in the, in the barn. Um, they're actually gonna go in Kevin's pen. He's gonna be very mad about that, but he'll get over it. So they'll go inside for tonight so that they are um, not eating food overnight and their crops won't be all super full tomorrow when we process them. So let's catch some chickens. So usually I have like a board to scoop them, but I'm gonna just see how far I can get without that. And I'm going for all the bigger ones. Two, seven. Should we do seven and seven? That's what'll fit in there. knocked over the whole egg table. <laughs> This is what they looked like not even seven weeks ago. It is insane how fast they grow. From this to this in seven weeks. It's insane. All right, it's the next morning, today is the day. So we're gonna get this test batch of chickens processed. So the very first thing that you wanna get going is your scalding pot. So that's gonna take a really long time to get that volume of water heated up. We want it to get to 150 degrees 
Um, so that's the very first thing that you want to get going. Uh, we also have the plucker all set up. Uh, these are our cones that we will dispatch in and then um, from there everything will go inside into the canning kitchen um, for further processing. So that's where we will um, eviscerate and I'll show you that step when we get there. So we're just doing 15 chickens today just to um, dial everything in. It's the first batch of the season. So I just wanna make sure that everything is working properly before we actually dive into the full processing for the year. So let's talk about some of the essential equipment that you need. First and foremost, you need a very, 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 very sharp knife for dispatch and have a separate knife specifically for dispatch. Um, if you've ever processed chickens before and you didn't have a sharp knife, you know how inhumane that is. Um, it's very essential for a humane dispatch to have an incredibly sharp knife. So I use these, and I'm not sponsored or anything, but I use these outdoor edge knives with the um, replaceable blade. So uh, this thing is scalpel, scalpel sharp. Um, so that's what I use for dispatch and I reserve this only for dispatching chickens and I use a new blade every single batch. So um, get yourself a very, very sharp knife. You will need additional knives for um, cutting up and eviscerating and stuff like that, but have a knife dedicated to dispatch. It will make your dispatching go smoothly and make sure that your dispatch is humane. You'll need some kind of uh, restraint, a cone or something to put your chickens in for dispatch. It keeps them calm, it keeps them from hurting themselves. Um, you've heard the old adage like running around like a chicken with its head cut off. We're not using a hatchet on a log here, you know. Um, so putting them upside down in the cone um, calms them and ensures that they're in a calm state of mind and they're not in fear uh, when they go, which is important to me. You need some way to scald your chickens. So a vessel that is big enough to fully submerge your bird, um, that is essential for removing feathers. Um, then a plucker is really nice, but you don't need one. If you don't have a plucker, you don't need it. Um, you can absolutely pluck chickens by hand. And I recommend doing a few by hand first so that you really appreciate a plucker because um, it is no small task to pluck chickens by hand. Granted, the Cornish Cross have far fewer feathers than like a laying hen, so they're not as difficult to process as like if you were doing roosters that were of a laying breed, those would have a lot more feathers, a lot denser feathers, um, but still it's a big job. Um, then you need a clean place for uh, processing your chickens, so um, evisceration, um, I always have tubs set up for the different things that I'm saving, so livers, hearts, feet, heads, and then um, awful buckets for, you know, the digestive tract, intestines, um, all those kind of lungs, all those kind of things. You also need to have a plan for how you're going to deal with the offal. So um, whether you're burying it or composting it, um, you need to have a plan um, because it deteriorates very quickly. So having a plan for your offal. Um, and then another major material that you will need is ice. Lots and lots and lots of ice. Um, it's essential to cool the birds down as quickly as possible um, and get all of that body heat off of them. So make sure you have plenty of ice on hand. Uh, better to have too much and keep it in the freezer than to have not enough and have to run to the store for more ice. Um, especially depending on where you live, it might be a drive to get to more ice. And then you'll also need a way to package your birds. So I will usually um, rest my chickens for 24 hours um, or until rigor mortis has passed. So you can tell whether rigor mortis has passed by looseness in the joints. So when we test um, for when the birds are ready to cut up, the joints should be loose and move easily. If you process or if you cut up and freeze your chickens before that point, um, you're going to have a lot tougher meat. Um, so it's important to let them rest until rigor mortis has passed. 
and then you'll need a way to package your chicken. So um, for whole chickens, I really like the Texas poultry shrink wrap bags. Um, they also make smaller sizes for shrink wrapping parts, but I'm not a super huge fan of shrink wrapping the parts. They just kind of look funny in the packaging. And so I vacuum seal the parts. Then you also, um, if you're selling them for farmer's market, you need to have labels on them specifically with the PL exemption code on them. Um, and there's some other uh, language on there that needs to be on there to be legal. Uh, and I also order those from Texas Poultry Shrink Bags and um, you can have your logo and everything put on there. Um, if you, they're just for home use, a Sharpie is totally fine. Sharpie's perfect. <laughs> Alright, let's go get some chickens. I think that's it. We're ready to go. So we already ran into an issue. The burner for the scalder is not working properly. So I'm glad we're doing this test before we have to process chickens. So we'll get that figured. Is that on there? On there? So I always put them in the cone and then I leave them there for a minute to let their adrenaline come back down from just being picked up and put in there is kind of a little scary. And so I want it to be a peaceful, peaceful transition for them. So I'll put them in there and then just uh, leave them in there for a minute or two to let them calm down. I'll check my scald temperature and then I'll start dispatching. I'm not gonna show the actual dispatch, but I will demonstrate how to do it so that you feel prepared to do it with your own chickens. And we'll reach under here and pull their head down and we're gonna make an incision on either side of their jugular. And they will continue to move. Um, those are just residual um, nerves causing their muscles to contract. They're not alive though, um, so their their brain's gone black they're not seeing or feeling anything anymore um, their heart is still pumping because it is expelling we want that to be the case so that it expels all the blood from them but they're not conscious or aware of anything that's going on so don't be alarmed when they're still moving around just let them take their time to move through that all right so we want our scalding temperature to be between 145 and 150 degrees and the mistake that a lot of people make is they over scald. It really only takes about, in my experience, about six dips. Um, and you wanna go until the wing feathers are loosened. So here is a tutorial on how to process your chicken from here on out. First of all, we're gonna take the head and just pull it off. It's easier than trying to cut it. Then we're gonna take our um, feet. I'm gonna just pull off some of these feathers here, make sure that's nice and clean. And we're looking for this valley here. So if you just barely pop through that valley while applying opposing force, your foot will come off very easily. Same on this side, just touch up those feathers. And you shouldn't be having to apply very much force at all. If you find yourself trying to cut through bone, you're in the wrong spot. All right, so then up here at the front, we're gonna pinch this here and just cut down just through the skin. And we have our crop right here. So we're gonna take our thumb and separate that crop from the skin. So it's very slimy, but if you can get up under it 
and you're under the esophagus and trachea as well and then get between the neck and that and then just pull and you will separate that all out and um, that is now we'll do a little bit more separating here free and when we pull from the other side it will come right through now on this side We are gonna make the incision right above the vent, just right here. Just through, just through the skin. We don't wanna cut any of those intestines or anything. And then we'll reach in and separate from um, the body cavity up on top towards the breast. And grab a handful and pull. All right, so you can see that here is the crop and the esophagus that came through. Here is our liver and we wanna keep those, but this is our gallbladder and we do not want to pop that um, or get that into our meat in any way. And so we're just gonna separate that there. Sometimes you can just pull it, other times you will need to cut it. But again, being very careful, if you leave some liver behind, that's okay. So there's our um, liver. Save that. Then, from here, we are just going to cut down on either side of the vent. And all that is just going to go away with the vent. All right, we're not done inside here yet though. Next we have the heart, save that. Then we have lungs. So these are really stuck up next to the um, ribs, but you don't need those special lung removers. Just get in there with your fingers and remove those from the ribs. You could dehydrate those for dog treats if you want. And then we've got what's left of the trachea. And we're pretty well done here. Now I also don't leave the um, uh, neck on mine. So I'll remove those the easiest way to, or remove the neck. The easiest way to do that is with poultry shears. There you go. Great for soup stocks or dog treats. Then the next thing that we need to remove here is this scent gland here. So we can come in at it from this end and then this end and pull that right off of there. You could cut the whole tail off, that's fine too. So now my chicken has been resting for 24 hours. So now I am parting it out into boneless skinless chicken breasts, leg quarters, tenders, and wings. So I'll show you how I do that. So I have this handy dandy stand here um, that my man built for me. Um, and it's just built out of PVC and I put a um, sausage wrapper on the top. Um, so I'll take my whole bird here and this just slides onto the holder and I'm going to start with the wings and you're just going to pull straight up cut from underneath I try to get a little bit of that back muscle in there too and you're just going to pop right between the joint it helps to have a really sharp knife for this point but at no point should you feel like you're trying to um, cut through bone um, you should be going right through the joint and just meat so there's uh, one wing and so then what we're going to do with that is I take my poultry shears and I just, um, that's my incision mark right there. 
cut my wing tip off and then a couple little pin feathers here I'm gonna remove then my next cut is gonna be right there to make my drumette and my flat like so and then that's gonna go in this bag so over here what I have is um, two tubs and the tub underneath has ice in it so that this is all staying nice and cold um, the wing tips are going into um, a pile they make great dog treats yeah so we're gonna just follow up with this other wing man I'm not the fastest person in the world at this but I like to just take my time and be accurate and make it look nice There's our next wing. Again, wing tip, and right through the middle. There we go. All right, so then we have our leg quarters. So um, I'll try to do this to where you guys can see. So we're gonna make an incision right here um, in between the breast and the leg quarter, just like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm gonna try to try to do this to where you guys can see it. And then we're just going to pull those open. Now around on the back here, you don't want to miss these little guys right here. Those are your oysters. And so we want to make sure we go around that muscle there. And then we're just going to follow this seam um, all the way down, going between that joint. And you should just need to use the tip of your knife. Again, you're not trying to cut through any bone or anything. And there's your beautiful leg quarter. We'll do the same thing on this other side. Again, following around that oyster. Make sure you're getting that oyster in there. And maybe I'll try to do this one from this angle so you guys can see it. So we're just following down this seam here, right between that joint. It should not take much pressure from a very sharp knife just like that beautiful beautiful hunk of meat All right so then our breasts we're going to make incisions on either side of the keel bone and this one i don't know if i can do facing away from me but i'll show you what it looks like after i do so just coming down along either side of the keel bone and you can kind of feel it there like that um, and then we're gonna take this skin and just pull that skin on back I can't see over here pull the skin back um, then we're gonna follow this line up on top here and we're gonna remove the breast but leave the tender inside and I'll show you what that looks like so we're just gonna follow this breast along the top here so it'll look like this you've made an incision along the top and then you'll just separate that out and you can see the tender is inside and we're just going to cut along that breast to remove the breast and this is um, my first batch of chickens using this stand and um, I'm enjoying it I'm just still kind of getting used to it So there's our beautiful breast and I'll show you what it looks like. So our breast is removed and our tender still remains. I'm going to go ahead and remove the breast on the other side. Again up top just following the line of that breast and the wishbone is up there so you just kind of have to get around the wishbone. 
And again, here's what it looks like. It should just kind of separate away. And maybe I can cut this from this angle so you guys can see. Just like that, beautiful. All right, and then we'll remove those tenders. So we're just gonna continue, it's kind of the same as the um, breast, we'll just kind of follow that same path. So like this, and then we're just gonna follow that keel bone, we'll see if I can do it from this angle. Follow that keel bone on down. You guys hear Fabio out there? And there's our beautiful chicken tender. And so I have a bag going with my tenders because I put eight to a pack of the tenders, um, two to a pack of the breast, two of the leg quarters, um, and then I usually do a dozen wings. So it's up to you on what, how much your family eats in a sitting on how big you make your packaging. And there's our other tender. So then um, I'll go through and vacuum seal those. Um, but these frames I will use later for making bone broth. Delicious chicken bone broth. It's coming true. It's my first package of chicken that I will sell at farmer's market. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about that. Look at my logo, it's on there. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. So cool. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is shrink wrap some chickens in the Texas poultry shrink bags. So I'll show you the process for that. All right, so we're gonna make sure that this chicken looks all nice and perfect. There's a little spot here I wanna trim off. Double check the inside and make sure all the lungs and everything are out. And we're just gonna set this up on one of the um, pedestals to start drying and just drip drying. The less moisture we have in there, the better. So then our bag is just going to go over the bird like that. So the temperature for the shrink bags needs to be between 180 and 200 degrees. Take our chicken upside down, put the straw into the cavity, and tighten everything up around that. And you don't want the straw so far down that it's touching the bottom because that won't let air come up out of it. Get your zip tie on there. All right, here we go. And one, two, three, four, five. Beautiful. And give it a few seconds to finish shrieking up. And then pull your straw out and pull everything tight. All right, you guys, that's it for today. Like this video if you like this video and subscribe if you wanna see more homestead stuff. And as always, if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments below and I do my best to get back to those. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.